everybody. I am Ms. Karen at Adams Memorial Library. Thank you for joining me for September's Inquire Within program. Now this month we're talking about space, about the moon and the stars. So we figured the best PBS Kids character to talk about space with would be Jet Propulsion from Ready Jet Go. Have you seen Ready Jet Go on PBS before? I have. I really like it. If you've already seen it, then you'll know that Jet and his parents are from the planet Bortron 7, and they've come to Earth to study Earth, to learn more about Earth people and customs and funny Earth words. So for the, the kids this month, we have a lot of things that are based on the Ready, Jet, Go show. So you can study more about the moon and do some star activities. And one of the things that will be in the kit which you can come to the children's room and pick up, or you can give us a call and we'll reserve one for you and you can pick it up through curbside service. But one of the things that's in the kit will be Jet's solar system game. And Miss Grace was kind enough to get the game ready for me to show you. So you'll have a game board in the kit. It'll be on two pieces of paper that you'll need to attach together. So you can see there's a start and way over here there's a finish. And to win the game, you've got to go all the way through the solar system, past the planets, to the very outer reaches of our solar system. And that's what these game pieces are. You can be Jet, you can be his friend Sydney, you can be his friend Sean, you can be his friend Mindy, or you can be Jet's pet Sunspot. Here's Sunspot on one of our library books, so you can read about Ready, Jet, Go, too. But Sunspot is a Bortron pet, and not sure what kind of creature Sunspot is, but Sunspot's, Sunspot's his own creature. So you can choose any of those people or creatures to play the game with. And how you play the game is you draw cards. There'll be cards included in the kit, too, and the cards will tell you where to go on the game board. So you could get one that says, write a travel report about the Milky Way, move ahead two spaces, or you might get one that says, drive slowly through the asteroid belt, go back one space. So you'll just travel forward and back, forward and back, and try to hope to get to the end first. We have another kind of game that you can play too, it's in the kit with Mindy's Wheel of Planets. This is Mindy. Mindy is Jet's youngest friend, but Mindy still loves space and loves learning things, especially about the planets. So this packet in your kit has something you can cut out and put together after you color it. You can color Mindy for Mindy's Wheel of Planets and you can color all the planets in the solar system. And if you're not sure what colors to use, that's okay because that's what the rest of this packet is about. It's got information for all the different planets and the sun in the center of the solar system. So you can color Mercury, you can color Venus, you can color Earth. After you've colored everything, You'll cut out the two wheels, and then we'll give you brass fastener so you can cut out the two wheels, put the brass fastener in the middle, and then you'll be able to move this top wheel and you'll see one of the planets underneath. And then when you play the game, after you've learned a little bit about the planets, you can decide which planet you'd like to be. You can line yourself up by how far away you are in space, or you could organize yourselves the other way. So, when you finish playing the game, you're going to know a lot more about the solar system. Let's talk a little bit more about the moon and the stars. In your kits will be information about the phases of the moon. So, you know, sometimes it's a full moon, sometimes you can only see a half a moon, sometimes a quarter of a moon, and the moon seems to get larger in the sky where you can see more, more of it and then smaller in the sky where you can see less of it. Here are two different ways to chart the progress of the moon as it's making those changes. 
you can use this chart. And that's what Miss Grace started. Here was when the moon was starting to disappear and get smaller and smaller until there's no moon in the sky. And then it starts to come back, get a little bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. So it goes from the new moon where you can't see it. It'll go all the way up to the full moon and then back again. So if you use the chart, you'll have the whole kind of a month of the moon, four weeks of what the moon's doing all in one place. If you use this, this is from Psy Girls. And when you do it this way, instead of having it all on a chart, you can do it in a book. And you see, you can put the moon on a different page. And this will have 28 pages at the end. And when you're done, you can flip through it, like you're flipping through a book, and it'll make the moon look like it's moving, like it's going from the new moon to the full moon and back again. So if you'd like to do it this way, you'll just color all the parts on these individual pages and you can write in the date and what phase the moon is in. If it's a full moon, if it's a half moon, if it's waxing, where it's getting bigger, or if it's waning, where it's getting smaller. So you're gonna be a scientist. You're going to be studying space and studying how the moon goes. You can also be a, a space scientist by studying the stars. Have you heard about constellations before? How if you look up at the stars at night, if you can really see them clearly, sometimes people imagined that the different stars look like different shapes in the sky. And so to study this at home, if you can't get out to see the stars, you can use a flashlight and put the constellations in front of your flashlight and then you can shine it on the wall and then it'll look like your flashlight is making the lights of the stars so you can even make a constellation with stars inside. What you'll do for this is cut out some of these little circles. And in this kit, there's Ursa Major, the Great Bear, there's Ursa Minor, the Small Bear, the Little Bear, there's Leo the lion, and there's Taurus the bull. So you'll cut this out, and then you'll use a little pin and poke through the holes, which are where the stars are. Here, it, when you see a picture of a constellation, it'll have lines on it. When you're looking up in space, you can just see the stars. So the holes are where the stars would be. And then you'll take a flashlight and you'll put the circle with the holes in it. Well, can you see it a little bit better in front of the black? You'll put that on your flashlight. You'll cut out the circle so it'll fit whatever flashlight you have. And then when you turn on the light of the flashlight, the light will shine through the holes and then you can put it up in a dark room, put it on a wall, and then you'll be able to see the stars for these different constellations. You can use these ones to start, but you can look up different constellations and draw those out too and poke the holes. And so you can see a lot of different constellations just inside your house. And then when you go outside, you can look up and see if you can spot them in the sky. We have a couple of crafts for you to do this month too, and they're based on stars. Remember I was telling you about constellations? Well, here in Sunspots Night Out, here are some pictures of what we mean about constellations. This one is the Big Dipper. These are the stars that you could see in the sky, but here's where somebody drew them and thought it kind of looks like something you could dip water with or soup, kind of a ladle. So that's what the Big Dipper constellation looks like. So one of the things you can do is draw constellations. This one is an actual picture of a real constellation called Cygnus, which is the swan. So this is, you kind of have to use your imagination with, with constellations, but it's sort of designed to look like a swan flying in the sky. These would be 
the wings of the swan, and this would be its head, this would be its tail, its body. So in your kit, we will give you some black paper and some chalk and some star stickers. You put the stars on where the stars would be in the constellation, and then you can draw lines in between with the chalk. You can do what I did. I looked on the internet and I found a picture of a constellation that I thought, oh, that looks like a good one. I like swans. So I did Cygnus. You can do that and draw the Big Dipper, like in the book. You could do that. You could draw a real constellation or you could make up your own constellation. You can draw a picture with the chalk. You can put stars on and you can make a new constellation if you'd rather do it that way. Please do that and would love to see what you do. So you can uh, email a picture to us. You can always come in and show us what you've made. So you can make your constellations and you could also make a star decoration. Now to do this, we will put a template with stars in your kit. You will need five of them to make one of these ornaments. I, may, I cut these out of paper and you can kind of see that mine didn't exactly line up quite right. So I'm, I think I'm gonna take a pink uh, crayon or marker and just kind of go around the edges and make it look like it was on purpose. But what you'll do is trace five stars. You could trace them out of white paper and uh, decorate them yourself. You can do paper like this. We'll put some paper in your kits so you can decide what you'd like to do, however you would want to do it. And you'll just need to cut out five. And then you will fold them carefully in half, all five of them. And then what you will do is glue them, glue the halves together. So you'll have two stars and you'll glue half of one to the back of another one. And then you'll do that with the next star and the next star. You'll do it with four. And then when you get to the fourth one, before you put the fifth star on, you can take some yarn or something else to hang the star with. So before you put the last one on, you take the piece of string and I just doubled it up put a knot at the bottom and a bead on, and then glued it inside the star ornament before I glued the last one on. I actually had to use a little bit of tape too. You know, I love tape. So when in doubt, I just tape things. So I taped it to make the loop hang straight. And then after I had glued the fifth star on, I put three beads on and then tied a knot at the top. And that's when I had my loop for hanging. So you can do this too. You can hang it up in front of a window. It can be your own star to look at. I want to thank our friends at WQED Education and Clearview Federal Credit Union for making it possible for us to bring this, this kit to you. So thank you very much, friends, and thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Thank you for doing the kit. Thank you for coming to the library. I hope to see you at the library soon, friends, and See you again for another Inquire Within program in October. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.